There is a familiar passage of Scripture, and you are so accustomed to this uh, passage of Scripture, and, and I want to thank the Lord. I, I cannot uh, begin to thank God enough for the prayers of the righteous, and it is because of the prayers of the righteous that I'm here right now. Uh, I, I can't begin to share with you all of the things that I've gone through, but I can just tell you that I just don't look like what I've been through. If only you knew what I've gone through in the last year and year and a half, you'd be doing like mother here, dancing. I like that stepmother that you were doing there. You know, if it wasn't so many steps, I would have got down there and danced right with you. But the Lord has been good to me. If you would allow me just to lift a passage of scripture that is found in the gospel of St. Matthew at the 8th chapter, and you'll find these words, it is a very familiar passage of scripture that is found in uh, St. Matthew chapter 8. And there you will find these words at verse 28. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Jesserins, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Let me read that latter part just one more time. There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. Two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. So that no man might pass by that way. So that no man might pass by that way. I want to talk to you just for a few fleeting moments from the subject, the roadblocker. The road blocker. The road blocker. Many times in our life, there are situations and circumstances that we face that block us from achieving and accomplishing the things that we set out to do. Sometimes in our life, there are detours and there are situation circumstances that alter our ability to ascend courageously to new horizons. There are blocks, there are barriers, there are situation circumstances that all of us must face. Some of us are not transparent enough to admit that sometimes there are some things that are just in our way. We do well and we uh, set our goals high and, and, and they should be. We aim at high and lofty objectives and then all of a sudden, whether expected or unexpected, there are roadblocks. Roadblocks uh, that come in our life uninvited. Lo roadblocks that come in our life unexpected. Roadblocks that come in our life unwelcome. I want to talk about some unwelcomed roadblocks. I want to talk about what to do when there are things that you face that you don't really want to face your worst nightmare, the storm of your life. It indeed, I want to label it as a roadblock. Sometimes you must understand that in the face of a roadblock, there are signs that the construction worker will put down. And the sign will say detour. And the detour is there many times because of a roadblock. Now you need not get discouraged when there is a detour. 
because a detour is a way of protecting you from the danger of the roadblock. Sometimes there are some holes. Sometimes there are some danger that is seen and sometimes unseen. But when there is a sign that says veer to the left, veer to the right, get off the road, turn this way, detour, it is for your own good. And sometimes I know it's faster if you could stay on that road, but in order that you might survive, that you might be stronger, that you might be better, there are many times detours. And I don't want you to curse the detour that happens in your life. I want you to learn how to bless the Lord at all times and let his praise continually be in your mouth. You need to learn how to fill the atmosphere with something out of your mouth. It should not be negative, and God deliver me from negative people. I don't like hanging around negative folk. I don't like being in the company of negative people. They break your spirit. They steal your joy. They upset your peace. God deliver me from negative people. The devil is the accuser of the brethren and can never see anything good, but I made up my mind that even when I see a detour in my life, I'm going to learn to give God the glory and to give God the praise because he knows what is best for me. And sometimes things are under construction. And when the construction is completed, then the path will be clear. You better know that this thing will not always last. That weeping can only work third shift and endure for a night. Joy must come in the morning. You've got to encourage yourself to know that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Bible says the Lord will deliver us from them all. And whenever the Lord says all, God means all. So if he's going and when he delivers us from that thing, we'll have a testimony. Now there's some of us that don't have to wait till the battle is over. We know how to rejoice and to praise God in the midst of our storm. There's some of us that don't have to see our way out. But we just know that the God of the Bible, that he's going to bring us out. I wish you'd just shake somebody near you and tell them somehow, some way, we're coming out of this with more power than when we started. Please sit down, it's rude to stand while somebody's talking. Hallelujah to Jesus. Sometimes there are detours in our life. Thank you, Jesus, and just give me four more Kojic minutes. Sometimes there are detours in our life. And these detours in our life, they are working for our good. I know it may not feel like it right now, but God is up to something. And I've come to remind somebody here tonight that there will be glory after this. You've got to learn how to hang on in there and how to give God the praise and how to bless the Lord at all times and know that the Lord yet is your shepherd and will lead you beside still water. Somebody here is a witness tonight that he will restore your soul. Do I have a witness here that knows the Lord will restore your soul? When your back has been against the wall and you did not know what to do, somehow, old folks said he made a way out of no way. I wish you'd shake somebody and tell him he's a way maker. For he made a way for me. Now think about that way that he made for you. And just take a moment and give him the glory. Please be seated here. Oh Lord. 
Oh Lord, oh Lord, I can see Jesus. And you know that the Lord will show up just on time. Old people said he may not come when you want him. But he's always hey! Excuse me, excuse me. Always on time. Please be seated, preachers. Well, the Bible says that there were two men that were in the tomb. When you read the Gospel of Mark, Mark talks about one of those individuals. And when Jesus asked him what his name was, the man said, my name is Legion, for there are many of us living here. And a legion is symbolic of thousands of demons. I don't know how that man lived with thousands of demons because I don't like living with one demon. But praise be to God. Sometimes you've got to live with something until God brings you out. I wish you'd pull somebody and tell them God's going to bring you out. Or you didn't pull them by the hand of faith. Pull them with some faith and tell them God's going to bring you out. You didn't have a good witness there. You need a good prayer partner. Somebody full of the Holy Ghost. They don't have to know what you're going through. But just pull them and tell them God's going to bring it. God's going to... There you go. Three Kojic minutes. Well, well, sit down, preachers. Well, his name was Legion. Sit down, preachers. His name was Legion, and there were many. But, 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 but. It doesn't matter how many demons come against you. Isaiah said it best. No weapon. Formed against you shall prosper. You've got to learn how to pull it down. Pull down every stronghold. Pull down every struggle. I wish you'd pull that thing down and then clap your hands and shout victory, victory. Well, Two Kojic minutes. You know Kojic minutes are not regular minutes, y'all know that. Well, so Jesus, hallelujah, comes across and he meets these two individuals. Now one man, hallelujah, had come out of Decapolis and Decapolis stands for 10 cities and he wanted to go with Jesus and get on the ship. But I wish you'd look at somebody and tell them you can't hang out with everybody. You've got your own anointing. The things that you've been through is for your testimony that God may get the glory and that God may get the praise. Everybody doesn't understand what you've been through but when you go through something, I'm talking about to the real saints, when you go through something, you will affirm, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising the Savior all the day long. 
I wish somebody shout I've got a testimony I've got a testimony I've got to get ready to sit down now I've taken up too much time but can I tell you my testimony in just the last year and a half hallelujah to Jesus if I take one or two steps, I would become winded and short of breath. Hallelujah to Jesus. My doctor cardiologist had said, praise be to God that your heart is working at less than 15 to 20%. Hallelujah to Jesus. I don't look like nobody who's got heart problems, but God. The blood vessels in my eyes, both of them had burst and I could not see. And the ophthalmologist said, hallelujah to Jesus, just put some drops in them and it'll be all right. But the drops didn't work, not the drops that that doctor said, but just one drop, one touch. I'm not done please take your seat so I ended up in the hospital with 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 a heart condition and then they had told me that my blood sugar that should be between 80 and 120 was at 1140 heart condition Blindness of the eye, high diabetes, but God, it didn't stop there. Then when I got in the hospital, they took x-rays and they said that your kidney is in failure. Your creating number is too high. You're gonna end up on dialysis. It didn't stop there. They kept on taking x-rays. I'm talking about in April of this year, May of this year. Then they say we see white spots on your leg. We are certain that it is cancer. Cancer, diabetes, heart condition, blindness, but God. The saints, they were roadblocks. Roadblocks, the doctor told me, you need to stop preaching now because your heart cannot handle the stress that you're under. You need to tell the church you cannot pastor and you can no longer be a bishop because your body cannot handle it. But praise be to God. While in ICU, the doctor said, we're gonna take one more test and we're gonna find out to make sure of everything. When they took my blood sugar, my blood sugar was at 96. When they took my heart rate, it had jumped up to 28. When they checked my eyes. They said everything's all right. When they looked at my kidney number, they said we can't explain it. Your kidney should not be at almost three, but now it's at 1.2. And while that doctor was telling me that, the cancer oncologist came in with the screen, shaking his head said we got the proof that you had cancer but there's no cancer the cancer is gone roadblocks roadblocks but you better praise God the more you praise him the more he'll bless you I will bless the Lord at all 